welcome to the geek the history geek i'm mr hodges throughout history the power of shared words ideas and knowledge has had a powerful effect on human societies the printing press has increased the power of these things on people and on societies of the past much like the effect of well you know social media and the internet is having on each of us in our society today now, from the time of its invention in China during the Han Dynasty in the 9th century, printing has had the ability to spread information. Unfortunately, the Chinese printing presses were extremely labor-intensive due to its hand-cut wood blocks, and this made it less effective. The Koreans began using a movable type in the 14th century, the 1300s. The problem is that the Korean language, which is closely based on Chinese, uses a large number of different characters thousands of them, and then this requires assembling them onto pages for printing. This was a very long, slow process. So if the printing press and movable type was not invented by Johannes Gutenberg, why does he get credit? It is important for us to understand that for the widespread use of technology to happen, it will depend on how useful the technology really is. The printing technology in Asia did not spread to Europe. It just really wasn't that practical. Most historians and researchers know that the Europeans, including Johannes Gutenberg, had little or no knowledge about the Chinese and Korean use of movable type for printing. His printing press was based on the medieval paper press for making paper, which was in turn closely based off the wine and olive presses used for hundreds or even thousands of years. Gutenberg's work led to an easy to use machine and his design of reusable and movable type could be quickly and easily set up. While still labor intensive, his invention made the printing press more practical. The European alphabet also required only 26 letters, making it much faster to set up. By 1454, he was able to put his press to practical commercial use. His design could allow an experienced printing team to print up to 250 one-sided sheets per hour. His most famous work produced by his press is known as the Gutenberg Bible, each consisting of more than 1,000 pages each. The use of the printing press would have a dramatic effect and would be responsible for changing many things on the European continent. With growing literacy across Europe, the press allowed the faster printing of books and in turn helped to lower the price of those books. It more rapidly spread knowledge, scientific discoveries, and later on contributed to the Protestant Reformation that would spread across Europe and split the Catholic Church. Less than 50 years after Gutenberg's successful printing of the Bible, more than 1,000 printing shops had opened up in over 200 cities across Europe. Since the 1450s, many improvements were made to the printing press to make it more durable, reliable, quicker to use, and even more effective at printing. The printing press really allowed for a consistent communication of messages because it allowed for the exact same message to be duplicated and sent without error. It allowed for faster replication or copying when compared to writing by hand, which allowed for a quicker spread of information across a vast area, and even more importantly, it lowered the cost of creating the copies and the spread of information. This would help to spread many new ideas and beliefs. The printing press would spread the news of new discoveries during the age of exploration, the research, experiments, and findings of the scientific revolution, and also the ideas of the Enlightenment. Now, during the colonial period, communication using the printing press could be spread in a variety of different ways. I will give you a few examples. One of the most common ways ideas were spread were through the use of a broadside. A broadside is a one-sided notice that was typically intended to be printed and used to quickly deliver information and notices that could be spread through towns to various central public places where they could be tacked up and read by citizens. These could be found at public places such as taverns and other important meeting places. These could be delivered very quickly with the latest news, government proclamations, public announcements, opinions if someone wished to pay for that uh, message to be spread, advertisements, or even entertainment updates so that people would know what was happening throughout the colony or the town. Another one of the more common and popular examples for the use of the printing press is also the newspaper. 
Today we are all familiar with newspapers. They contain articles about things going on in other countries, especially the mother country, across the colonies and in various places across the colony where the paper was located. They would often include ads for things to be sold, wanted ads for people to be hired, or things to be purchased, and runaway ads for indentured and enslaved people. These papers allowed local people to better know what was going on, and the articles became a source of discussion and debate in public places, such as ordinaries and taverns. The pamphlet was a third type of print material that was produced by the printing press. Typically ranging from 5 to nearly 50 pages, these printed materials covered a range of topics and were a very important tool for the communication of information and ideas. The pamphlet would focus on a central topic, such as advice on planting crops, to discussion of the topics of the Enlightenment, and even the politics of the day. This was a good way for people to voice their opinions about a topic, to vent anger about a situation, or to convince people to join a cause. The one important thing to remember, regardless of what was being printed, was that the printing press was a very powerful tool for the spreading of a message and ideas. For example, it helped to strengthen colonial resolve in the British North American colonies against things such as the Sugar Act or the Stamp Act. Later, it would help to push reluctant colonial citizens in all of the colonies to either support or consider supporting the movements against the activities of the mother country of Great Britain. The Boston Massacre broadside is perhaps the greatest example of this use of the press to gain the support of the colonial citizens. It was used very effectively to inflame people's feelings and opinions of the controversial event. The purpose of the document was to push citizens to choose sides following this event when they see that the British were willing to kill their own colonial subjects. Throughout the period of years leading up to the fighting with the British, published printed essays and pamphlets allowed various people to argue different ideas, beliefs, and political positions. The printing press literally allowed the colonial citizens to read and debate the ideas and help to debate the political ideas that many colonial citizens began to take. Once the actual fighting began, it was the printing press and the pamphlet Common Sense that helped to argue for the idea of independence from the British. The power of the press literally helped to lead to the founding of a new nation. The Founding Fathers recognized the power and the importance of a free press and the role that it had played in the creation of the United States. It is this power and it is this purpose that was protected by the First Amendment. The First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. You will note that the words freedom of speech and freedom of press are right there together in the middle of that amendment. It is also very interesting to note that these things are both protected in the very first amendment. It cannot be overstated that without the power of the press that the activities of the British across the various colonies may not have been easily known and the ability to fight against the abuses of the British would have been much more difficult. I hope you can better understand the role and the power and the importance of the printing press as part of our history. In addition, I hope you can better understand why the First Amendment right of freedom of press is so cherished and something we should always work to protect. Well, that's all for now. I'm Mr. Hodges, and this is The History Geek.